Let's try that again. Hello. <laughs> What's up, dude? Hello. How you doing, dude? <laughs> good, good, good. How's uh, how's everything been going since the last time we talked? Yeah, yeah. So I um, got really lazy over the holidays. With, okay. Well, I guess also because my as the living situation was, I was sharing a very small space with another person. Sure. Who might not have appreciated me being up playing games all night. Okay. Um, so I'm now in the very painful process of getting my ass handed to me on the ladder. <laughs> yeah. Did you end up getting a real person? After the break. Did you end up moving? Um, no, no. This was like my, my partner was here for a while. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. COVID, co COVID, COVID stuff. I understand. Okay, yeah. So you took a bit of a break and now the game's hard again. Yeah, yeah. And that, that I just got lazy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's always hard, but now I'm kind of like, oh, no. This is embarrassing. <laughs> so where are you kind of setting at yeah. now in terms of like league overall? Um, Diamond uh, 2. Okay. So I guess I've uh, dropped down like half a whatever, sure. half a tier. Uh, and uh, yeah. refresh my memory as to just what kind of... Like if you want to, we can continue with the last thing we talked about and build upon that. Or uh, if you want to do something newer, we can. But what was the last thing... You're kind of like, or what's the, like, what's the way you're kind of play, trying to play the game for now in terms of like play style? Two. Yeah. So I'm trying to play like a macro based and I guess the idea is to learn to react to stuff, right? I mean, I don't know if I do that so successfully, but um, and I guess we've been doing a lot of um, Zerg versus Terran, okay. uh, looking at sort of scouting and... Um, like the standard speedling style openers? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. picking sort of either either when to go into Lingbane Hydra, which is sort of what I like to do against Bio, and what to do against Mech, the sort of yeah. warm host Hydra. Okay. Yeah. What have you been, kind of since you've been playing again, what do you think you've been struggling with the most out of like all things that are happening to you? Yeah, so I... <clears throat> a lot of it, I think, has been just sort of <laughs> forgetting to do basic shit like injecting kind of <laughs> yeah injecting yeah. and sort of sending out my scouts at the appropriate time sure. and you know all that all that stuff just very forgetful um last days i haven't really had so many great cvps i mean i have a or cvts i mean i have a couple of embarrassing losses sure you can look at uh, <laughs> <laughs> no worries um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm down to look at any matchup you want to go over. It's totally fine with me. Uh, if you want to check out ZVT, if you want to like revisit ZVT again and just kind of brush up your, like what's important, what you should be doing, all these kinds of things, that'd be totally fine. Uh, I would still, when, I think I recommended this to you last time, but if I didn't, I'll just say it now. If we did talk about ZVT, I still recommend you go into a, like a roach into like a Swarmost Hydra style if it's mech. And if it's bio, I definitely recommend you go into like Lingbane, Hydra, into Lurker. Like those two basic Zerg Lur armies. Are... Ah, we, we haven't really talked about Lurkers, I think, at all. Oh, really? Okay. So yeah, Lurker is... So like Lingbane, Hydra is the mainstay of versus bio. If you want to make it really, really easy, uh, Lingbane, Hydra is probably the most like solid, easier to use army that, that Zerg has. Uh, a lot of the other like uh, compositions that Zerg can do are very meticulous. Like it takes, for instance, if you just skip a support unit altogether, like if you skip Hydras and you skip Mutas or anything like that, and you just go Massling Bane, that's a very, uh, that's, I would say that's a harder style to do because it's very weak if you don't kill economy. Mm -hmm. But if you do kill economy, suddenly it's super strong. So it's super specific how you need to be playing that. Very proactive about like attacking. And then the other style of going for, instead of Hydras, if you're going for Mutas, it's kind of the same thing again. You need to be proactive about how you use your Muta, and it's it takes a lot of multitask. Because if you don't pay attention to your Muta, suddenly they're all dead in like three seconds. And if yeah, you... Yeah, it, I mean, it's, yeah. it's totally an aspiration for me to play Muta at some point, but yeah. God, I just suck with I, them. They, they I would die. just... Yeah. Either they die or I don't inject. Exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. And, or, like, you spend too much time trying to micro them and you just don't macro. And you're like, oh, okay. I'm I mean, I do that I do that in 2v2 for kicks. But like, yeah, sure. So, like, right now, I just... In the way ZVT kind of works, especially when they're going bio, it's really hard to make mutas work because it just requires... 
so much finesse from Zerg to like get shit done. If you go to like, for instance, if you waste time at all by either the, the randomness of your opponent being in the area you want to do attack and he just happened to be there, he may or may not have scouted your mutas and saw where they were going, or he might've just literally went, here's a good place to stand. Oh, look, mutas arrived and now they can't do anything. Every time that kind of shit happens to you, if you pick like a location to attack with Muta and it's just wrong and you have to fly back and go figure something else out, you're falling behind playing a Muta style because Mutas only really work if you're either killing drops that are hitting your base or you're you're like slowing your opponent down by doing anything like killing SCVs, killing supply depots, killing add-ons to a building like a reactor or something like that. Anything to help slow down the Terran because if you don't slow them down at all, when, if you find yourself in the situation where all you can do is defend a big push with mutas, it is so hard to make mutas work. And even further than that, if the Terran has like a Thor or two Thors and mixed in with, with a lot of their bio, or if they have a bunch of Widow Mines mixed in with their bio, you're going to be like, okay, mutas suck. Like, this is so hard to make them do anything now. So it, it's just definitely a style that requires you to be very active and switched on with like everything you're doing. It takes a lot yeah, of practice. Yeah. Hydras just yeah, make it easier. I basically don't trust myself with, with spires. <laughs> yeah, no, Hy Hydra's so much easier. Hydra's like, it's the unit that can still kill drops. It can still help DPS like defensively whenever you're getting attacked by a Liberator or anything in the air. Banshees. Uh, but at the same time, it is a unit that is designed to basically not counterattack. It's designed oh, to really defend yourself. Yeah. And then whenever the attack happens, you fight on creep and you just overpower the Terran. And then you, all you have to do is, like, you can just attempt to do, like, little random Ling Bane runbys. So maybe you send, like, 20 Zerglings and 6 Banelings over to, a, like, a 5th base or, like, a 3rd base or something from the Terran. And you're like, we'll see what happens. And if nothing happens, not a big deal. Not a big investment from you. Um, because your main investment is still Ling Bane Hydra defensively on creep. And creep spread is really the goal there. So Hydra definitely easier. And I'm, I, I bet, if I had to guess, I would say... On average, you probably play one of two Terrans a lot, and that is one Terran player who goes for Marine Tank Widowmark, or uh, sorry, Marine Tank and Medivac, so like just tanks and bio, where they have like five or six tanks and a push with a bunch of bio with it, or you probably play people who have like maybe like ten Widow Mines in their push, and they just push you with Mer bio mine Medivac. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I would say bi bio mine or bio bio tank definitely. So and sort of ran some kind of. <clears throat> Some kind of random harass will probably happen, either sure. like liberators or drops. Sure, or sure, sure. So here's a cool way you could do mind drops. A cool whatever. way, you, a cool way you could play this would be if the, if you're playing a Terran player and they're the kind of player that is bio mine medevac, so lots of mines with bio. You stay on Ling Bane Hydra for a little while, but then you just go into Lurker, and we can talk about how to do that. And if you're playing against a Terran player who goes for tanks instead. You could literally just stay on Ling Bane Hydra, and you don't even need to make lurkers while he's on tanks, because Ling Bane Hydra, if you fight on creep especially, and you come from like either a flank or like a good concave, it's not just one little tiny like blob running at him. So you like you spread out and then engage. Good chance you're going to beat tanks that way. Uh, very good chance. So, and also even then, uh, if it's not bio mine and if it's bio. Oh, sorry. Yeah, if, if it's bio mine, lurkers are great. But if it's bio tank, you could actually go Ling Bane Hydra for the most part. And then eventually switch into like Ultra Lisk as well. And not even go like mass Ultras. We're talking just make like five. Five Ultras with a bunch of Ling Bane and some Hydra. And you're fine. Someone in chat said Vipers. And I would say for you right now, again, we're talking Diamond League. I said, please, please don't make me yeah. build any spell casters. <laughs> yeah, no Viper for now. It's so much harder than people make it out to be. Do not go Viper yet. If you get to like Masters like talk about going Vipers then, but do not fucking do Vipers in Diamond 2. Uh, it's not good. You're going you're like, you're to be like, oh, this just feels like shit. And you're going to always have like more money than you think you should because every fight needs to be, again, more... It's, it's like it follows the same rule as like Mutalisk. It makes everything more meticulous if you have something that requires timing and something that requires finesse to use. I'm not going to lie, Ling Bane Hydra is kind of just like a big fucking muscle you just throw at your opponent and go, A move. Let's see what happens. And then, yeah, if, if you can micro it even more than that, wonderful. If you can, like, split apart your Lings against Widow Mines and shit, that's great. But realistically, it's fucking A move. It's it's really just A move. So it's it's about understanding how to overwhelm your opponent rather than out micro your opponent. 
Um, and the ultras fall, fall into that same role. You don't micro fucking ultras. You just kind of like let them run over stuff like an elephant. Um, so yeah, I think that would... It, how does that sound to you? Lingbane, Hydra, into Ultra? Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. Okay. So I'll teach you both those styles. Uh, we can look at a replay as well if you'd like. Um, that doesn't matter to me. It's totally fine. Or otherwise, I can just kind of give you two examples of what you would do. Uh, I can give an example against what you do against Bio, an example about what you would do against uh, Bio Mine or Bio Tank. And then if it's... I don't know if I've shown you an example of what I would do against Mech, but I can give you that too as well if you'd like. We could go through multiple examples um, that you could just kind of like have an uh, example of to now do it yourself and just, you know, work work off that. Does that sound good? Yeah, that, so that sounds good because we haven't really done... I mean, you've looked at my replays and we've talked about it, right? But I haven't really got... Well, that's not true. I've actually gotten an example of you of how to defend um, a Bane Link bust in sure. the PvC. Okay. Which was very helpful, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I think, uh, yeah, I think the examples will probably help you more than me just talking about your replay. Because if I talk about your replay, I'm going to tell you everything you're doing wrong. And Yeah, I mean, it, the, the, a ahead. lot of these replays, I can kind of see that, you know, that, okay, there's an attack here. And sure. I wasn't really prepared. And here I forgot to make my extra queen. <clears throat> yeah. That sort of a thing. All right. So okay. in this one, um, I will go ahead and this time I will give you an example of... Uh, I mean, I'll give you all three if you'd like. I'll do the two bio ones first, and then if you want, if we have time. Yeah, let's start, start with those and see yeah. if we... Okay. Because I think bio is probably the most pressing. Okay. So, scouting is always going to be the same on every uh, in every format of how we're going to play against the Terran. Every opener is going to be the same. We'll talk about ways shit tra will transition, but... For the straight up bio, if we, know, if we go, oh yeah, it's bio. So, no matter what the computer does, we're just going to assume, oh yeah, yeah, it's bio. Uh, just so I can give you a solid example here. Uh, we'll go into... This time we'll go into Lingbane Hydra and to Ultra. So this will be like if it's Bio Tank. I'll leave it right here. Example for Bio Tank. So if you, if you watch this in the future, you're not going to be like, which one was this again? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's cool. Because I, I, I almost... I mean, I do Hive Tech for Adrenals and 3-3. Three, three, right? Exactly, but I yeah. I don't really yep. build Hive Tech against... Uh, yeah, and ultras are still going to make your life easy peasy because they don't require a whole lot of micro, honestly. They're, you just kind of like spread them out a little bit before the fight starts and you just let them go to town on the Terran's army. Okay, so we have our drone rallied to the expansion. Oh, second overlord's going to the front of the natural. First overlord's going to the Terran's base. Getting ready to take our expansion. Gonna go to an 18 gas, 17 pool right after this. We can rally our eggs towards the gas already. And then uh, yeah, we'll be ready to set up our next buildings. Um, and then yeah, like I said before, it'll be really easy all the way until about like seven minutes is when the builds are gonna deviate, like seven to eight minutes. Uh, so everything up to that point is identical on both sides. So. This will make then this will be a thing where it's like, am I fighting against tanks or am I fighting against widow mines? That's when you make the judgment call of what you want to do with it. Because I'm not gonna lie, if you make widow mines or sorry, if you make lurkers against widow mines, they'll feel great. But if you make lurkers against tanks, you're gonna be like, this is feels kind of weird. Like tanks are just scanning me and killing me. Yeah, their 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 range is yeah. really something. Like the <laughs> the only way, just a little disclaimer here. Uh, what someone in chat earlier, what Odin said, is right. If you do go Viper and Lurker, it does beat Tank, but I don't think you should be using Vipers and Diamond. It just makes it so much fucking harder than it has to be. So just go around it all together and just make Ultras and mass more Lingbane, and you can beat Tanks either way. And the the Diamond player will respond to macroing a lot better than microing out of situations. Okay. So... Okay, so this is as, as assuming we were like, oh, cool, he's got a fucking wall, yeah, yeah. whatever. Who okay, cares? So we, we'll go back to go over yeah, the like com computer is doing weird shit. Yeah, there exactly. Should be like a rack. <laughs> yeah. In this game, you'd be like, am I getting proxied right now? <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Okay, we can take our third. Successful. <clears throat> Oh, love the avatar. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, now we got all our lings coming up. Or, sorry, all our drones coming up. Get another queen started. Hmm. Oh, yeah, sorry. did I, I didn't pay attention. You you went um, tumor inject on the queen? Yeah, I, I, I tumor, tumor at the natural and then inject in the main. Yeah. And the reason okay, why yeah, yeah. the reason why I did this is so that we can immediately start covering that third towards uh, with creep, because getting your your natural to your third really fast. Oh is yeah, yeah. Hard. So 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 she she tumors, then she injects, and then she yeah, and then she goes to the third, and now she's going to the third, so that the third can be immediately injected, and now the inject will be replaced by queen number two that's spawning right now. So I'll never miss an inject. Uh, I, I mean, I missed the very first one for the tumor, but I don't miss an inject yeah, after yeah, yeah. that. And then you keep making queens, by the way. Like after you, you go all the way to like seven queens. So yeah, I don't know why, but I, I've, I've been doing like double tumor on my first natural queen. That's wrong, right? Uh, you can double tumor it. That's just safer. Uh, I would say either way works. Just just for the sake of repetitive, repetitiveness, though, probably just do uh, tumor, then inject, and then have only the new queens that are excess be the additional tumors. Okay, so we're making some yeah. lings to be safe. We can now start a hive because we have good economy. We can start a Bane Nest behind it. Because that way we can have Bane Link speed quickly once we have a hive. And this queen can do some tumors. <clears throat> okay, and now okay, we have. So you're making. Uh, are you making one queen at a time now? No, I'm making two at a time. I'm just. Uh, I, I am ideally, but I, I had a spy block there for a second, so now we're good again. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It should, should be good. Cool, cool. Okay, and so we're gonna we're making two at a time until seven. So we just got we're at five right now. Yeah, we're, yeah. These last two that come out are gonna be it for us. Yeah, cool. And we double gassed around twelve drones on the third base, and now that we're about to be fully saturated on all bases, it's very close. We can just take all the re rest of our gases all at once now because we're already at sixty plus drones because we're we're cranking drones like crazy here. And now we're going to take a Hydrogen and double Evos together once we have our layer done. And this is also, ideally, even furthermore than having a layer done, the bigger part is, is this is when you want to have a uh, fully saturated 3 base. So we want to be in the realm of like 66 to 70 drones. So we're good on that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Q, Q, so Q for Hydrogen and Evos, that's like that's when I take all gas and then the gas comes yep. flooding in and I can afford it. Ex exactly, base. yep. We can, we can make baneling or baneling speed, get a few banes. All of our bases looking pretty good right now. We can start making a few lings here as like a safety now because we're th fully saturated on three bases. And if we got hit right now, we definitely don't want to die, so we need some safety. While we're making lings, your gas will go up now. So now we start melee, carapace, and a hydra upgrade. And we can also throw in like one overseer whenever we can at around this point. That way, we have some detection and stuff like that. Okay. And now we have a good amount of lings. We have like 35-ish lings or so, 33. We can now go into another round of drones because we're looking pretty good here. Take drones for our fourth base. And around this time too, I would say would be a great time to add in a macro hatch. As soon as you start making drones for your fourth, yeah. take a macro hatch because you're, you're going for a ling style. So you're definitely gonna have not enough yeah. larva to do this yeah, properly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm definitely gonna need a macro hatch. Yeah. And then Possibly we, two. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. If you need to, it's fine. Um, and then we, from this point, we went into a fully saturated fourth base, and now we go right back into making lings. And again, the build's still the same. Uh, this is either way. What you like, you're going to be now soon encountering Terran. We can now, since now we're kind of done making drones, we can now start going crazy into ling uh, creation, and we can also rip off one of our queens. Oh, also we're getting hit too, so let's go defend ourselves. We can have one of our queens rip off, go to the base we just took, and have another queen rip off, and go to the main hatchery we just took. So we're gonna have we went from three queens injecting three hatcheries to now five queens injecting five hatcheries, and this is gonna be crazy for your larva. And we just spread creep in the meantime. And now I would say once you're working on like your you know hydrogen upgrade, your second hydro upgrade, this would be a great time to probably throw down like about six. Uh, or sorry, not six. About like twenty, anywhere around like eighteen to twenty hydras, and then. Um, okay, so you're you're really not making them until like the. Yeah, I don't rush them at all. Hydra hydra I, I rush the upgrades a little bit, but I do not rush the actual hydras themselves. Like you're gonna be way better off with just Lingbane, 
uh, a lot of the time in the early defense. So I don't even make hydros until like 140 supply. Because uh, if you get hit by something early and you're using unupgraded hydros altogether, you're just going to be like, wow, my army feels so yeah, weak. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they really suck ass. Like, yeah, they but when they're upgraded, the upgrade, so. suddenly they're way better. And now, when you start 2-2, two, two, this is when you deviate. Right now is when you deviate. So I'm going to pause right here and just say this. So everything is the same until this point. If you were going to start, if, you, if you're scouting the Terran around, around this time and you're going, okay, Terran player is going for Biomine. You, with the infestation pit, as soon as it's done and you start a hive, you pair that with a lurker uh, cavern or lurker den, whatever the fuck it's called. Just make lurkers, essentially, because you're fighting mines. Yeah. And lurkers are super good against mines. And the ideal composition you want to have, I would say, would be... Uh, Ling Bane is just excess. Just know that, okay? So drone count-wise, around 80, 85. That'd be fucking great if you can hit that amount. Hydra... Always have around 18 to 20, no matter what, every style, around 18 to 20 would be great. Lurker, have about like 10 against Terran, if they go Widow Mines, and then the rest of your supply is Ling Bane. Now, if it's tanks, then we'll, we'll come back to this later with tanks too, we'll talk about it again, and the other one. But that's the composition you want to have for Lurker, I'll write it down here again right now, just to make sure you understand. 18 to 20 hyd Hydras, plus 10 Lurkers, plus 80 to... 85 drones plus rest in Ling Bane. And then Ling Bane split equals one third Bane uh, and two third Ling. Like, if you can have it perfectly, yeah. ar around these numbers is great. So now you have that as always, you know, to be in here again in the future. That's the ideal composition you want to go for with bio. Oh wait, shit, I said example for bio tank. Fucking god, I did the wrong one. I just gave you the example of the lurker one for bio mine. Oh my god, I, I did it wrong. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I did it fucking, because you don't want to go fucking lurkers against tanks. Uh, example for bio mine. Not tanks. Sorry. Okay, so this is now bio mine. My bad, because I'm going lurker yeah, style, because yeah, I, ju I just oh, gave you the lurker composition amount. We'll talk about ultras yeah, the next game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, this is bio mine now, my bad. Uh, and then now from here, you're able, you're in that phase of the game now where you're just maxing out repeatedly off of Zergling, Baneling, Hydra, and that's it. You can go into <clears throat> basically defensive creep spread, just shoving it down his, in, in his face while you can launch like counterattacks if you want to. Or you can just kind of wait for the Terran to push you on creep and then you can just overwhelm him and stuff like that. Because at this point, your whole army is upgraded mobility wise and you're actual unit upgrades are they're cranking like crazy too and your, your your economy is just banging so now with our hive we make a hive uh or with our high layer we make a hive we start pair that with a lurker den we're still in a super good drone count and yeah like like i said you could do something with your army at this at this phase of the game you can definitely go pressure the terran attack a third base uh like if you attack them always remember the golden rule is don't fight their army fight their economy and if they attack you, fight the army on yeah, creep. Yeah. Never fight the army off creep just because you want to do something. That's the worst thing you can ever do. So always be killing economy if you're fighting them. Uh, and yeah, right now, again, we're just like, we're sitting here on a max army. We're chilling. Uh, this is when you probably want to make a few more banes. And have about, again, like uh, two-third ling, one-third bane. And then, you know, that. now at this point, trades would be happening against bio mine. You'd be doing other stuff. I would say this would be a great yeah, time too. Yeah, Ter Terran would probably be running stuff in, in the old Exactly. Time, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this would be a great time too to uh, around the time when you're waiting for your hive to finish and you're going to start developing a bank, start Overlord Speed and Burrow at the same time. The reason why that's super good is because it helps you get Widow Mines or it helps you d detect Widow Mines better with Overseers. And then if you also get uh, Burrow, it allows you to, if you want to start being cheeky a little bit. You could even try to burrow Ling's encounter. Like, if you counterattack a guy's base with, like, 30 Ling's, as soon as the Terran comes to defend it, you could try to just burrow them and then re up burrow them later or force a scan. Yeah. Or you can burrow Banes if you really, really feel like you could manage to pull that off and suddenly maybe you blow up a bunch of Marines. Like, burrow is a useful tool at this stage of the game. And now you can see I have the Lurker upgrades going. I have Adrenal Glands going. I have 3-3 going. So now is when we'd want to add in about 10 Lurkers and then remake about 10 more Hydras to replace the hydras we lose and now you can start pushing with lurker ling bane so you still want ling bane with lurker but now our composition is going to be lurker hydra ling ling lurker hydra yeah yeah 
yeah. with banelings as well. So the, we'll just add in a fourth unit essentially, and then you yeah. just you just keep trying to pressure, always attacking outwards in, kill newest expansion, and work your way further into their base after that. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. So how's that feel? Uh, I I for you, that makes sense or anything? No yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. It's kind of like, I mean, it's some conceptually very familiar, and then add lurker to that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in t in terms of lurker lurker control, uh, so I do go lurkers against pro toss unless it's like sky toss, which is nowadays every game. But sure. Theoretically, if they don't go sky toss, I, d I, I do go lurkers. Um, I just sort of put them on my on like a separate control group and kind of walk them around. Yeah, sort of... I would recommend doing that too. So an easy way to do it, what I just did, was uh, so I I just took my main army control group and I selected the hydras and I made ten lurkers. Yeah. I then control clicked the eggs of lurkers and I hit Alt two. It deletes them out of my main yeah, group yeah, and it puts them in group two. And so now like they steal them to. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And now they're just in group two. And every time when you take a fight with Terran, you just want to kind of like initially set them up on the outside of the fight where they're still going to get good range, but they're not going to. You're not going to just like walk them into the fucking battle. And the reason why again is because you're going to be ideally making lurkers against the Widowmine players. So if you have an overseer and you have lurkers, you could go to the out just the outskirts of the Widowmines because lurkers have almost twice the range of a Widowmine. You could burrow outside Widowmines. Overseer comes to reveal, and you're good to go. Another cool trick yeah. you can do, if you're like, if you're finding yourselves having a hard time, uh, being like, it's so fucking hard to reveal widow mines, because again, that's that's why we're, I'm telling you to make lurkers for the widow mines. Defensively, it's super easy because they walk into you, and you're like, cool, I'm I'm great. Like, my lurkers are owning you as you engage me, and then shit dies. But if you're trying to engage Terran and you know there are widow mines there, I highly recommend make a few extra overseers. Make like so instead of having like one or two, try to have like maybe. Like seven uh, overseers, or like five or four. Yeah. Just have a few more than one or two. And then what you can do is, is you can take one of your overseers, like this one right here, for instance, take it out of your control group, and have it move command after a lurker. So like you have overseers li literally doing uh, that. So it, they, they have like their own little detector. Exactly. Button. And you can do this as you try to set up a fight. So you, d this overseer is not even being controlled at all. It just is being told, hey, follow that lurker. And then you set up your lurkers, you burrow it. Let's say you kill a bunch of widow mines, you go forward, you burrow it. Overseer comes with you, kill a bunch of widow mines, move forward, burrow. Overseer comes with you, and you never have to touch it again. So you can just constantly shove down widow mines like crazy with minimal effort. And then once you have widow mines kind of destroyed and you you know you're kind of good, now you can engage with your lingbane hydra. Uh, so lurker just kind of breaks through the widow mine, um, and they're amazing defensively. Like a lot of zergs feel like very pressured defensively when it's like there's a bunch of widow mine there's like a widow mine field essentially with bio just walking in and out and hitting your drones and stuff and killing a hatchery and if you chase yep. the terran bio it's just like psh, 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 just widow mines everywhere and you're like okay everything dies so now you have a way you can just plant lurkers like in a line across the side of your hatchery and now terran can't push you like that anymore they they get stuck um and yeah that, that essentially is how you'd micro uh lingbane hydra lurker and that's that's kind of it. So I guess now we can yep, yep. jump into the other one of um, the ultras. We don't we don't gotta finish this game. No, no, okay, so that's yeah, Lingbane Hydra Lurker. Now I'll make a new one for you, and we'll talk about Lingbane Hydra Ultra. Yeah. Quick quick question. Sure. So as some um, sort of as a default, or um, I, I mean, unless something weird happens and you deviate. Sort of you, you stopped at something like sixty-eight-ish or whatever drones, and then built like a good amount of Lingbane, mm -hmm. and then like re sort of restarted droning and went back up to like eighty-four or whatever. Yes, that kind of what you would normally do. You would kind of pause after three bases. Yes. There, okay. So the, let then, me then make around the Lingbane and then sort of make your fourth. So it's. Or, Make Scout drones for your force. Scouting is a lot easier to talk about, uh, and this is something you're going to do with scouting. I we'll, we'll want to talk about it right now just to make sure you know. Uh, but scouting is something that's definitely easier with a real player because they actually do proper things. The AI is fucking so yeah, random. Yeah, yeah. But yeah there's, no, there's no, now, no point in looking what the computer the, yeah, does. This is, this is what it, it would uh, ideally be, okay? So the first scout, your first overlord, is going to tell you if you're being one base all in 
or like if it's like mass yeah. reapers yeah. or what it proxy racks or if it's going to be yeah. a standard build that looks like oh it's like a reaper and do an expansion and hellions or whatever it's going to be but yeah. if the player if the terran player goes for a build that is kind of along the lines of uh they expand and then you know for the very beginning of the game for the first like three or to four minutes you can just make drones with a couple of safety lings when you have speed then you're fine the four minute scout is a big deal okay with your overlord so the yeah the yeah. second overlord that goes to his base that which so it's not the first overlord that sits over the cliff in front of the natural it's the one that's supposed to go into the main base behind it that overlord yeah, yeah like the one, the one that I, I send that one to my natural and then i send it on oh, to exactly the base. yep yeah. and then it kind of arrives at four four ish yeah you're so, the man so uh thank you uh rinko thank you man uh what you want to do is you want to have the overlord go behind the like you know sit on the outskirts of the terran's main and then uh, uh in vibe you coin from rally.io thank you rob much love for the for the coin dono my man thank you thank you so, so uh, sorry test uh you what you want to do is uh your second overlord goes to the terrans outside the outskirts of the main in the air and then at four minutes roughly right at four minutes so even like if you feel like sometimes you're like oh whoops i i fucked it up i uh you know i i uh i fucking didn't scout properly between 350 and four minutes try to have that the window to start scouting in the terrans base if you start scouting at four minutes that is totally fine just I'm what I uh, if you start scouting at 350, that's totally fine. The idea is is right about four minutes you want to start entering the Terran's base, because Terran's going to show you a lot about what's going on. So if you start scouting the Terran's base at like 427, that's a bit late, and you might have made a bad choice now. And here's why this is what you want to do. If you see two things, you need to make lings right now. Otherwise, you'll only see one other thing really, and or like. Almost anything else means you can make drones, but let me let me tell you what this means. So right around four minutes, if you see a two one one build, this means what you would if your overlord gets in here and sees this. If you didn't know what it was yet, your overlord would probably die to about like seven or mar marines or like nine marines. Like a big chunk of marines will kill your overlord. Yep. You would probably also see <clears throat> a starport uh, on a reactor, and then that would be it. Or like. You would see a starport, you would see a factory, you'd see all the way up to like starport tech. You wouldn't see medevacs yet, probably, but you're gonna see a lot of marines and you'd be like, okay, this guy has a natural with like fucking nine marines, ten marines already. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a lot of marines. If you saw that, I would definitely say make one round of lings before you go back to droning. Because if you don't, you're gonna probably die to like some two on one pressure. If you saw, as well, if you saw anything that was not. Um, a third command center. So, if, but it was like multiple of anything. So, if you saw two factories, if you saw two racks and no starport, but it was like two racks and or, or three racks and a factory, or anything random where it's like multiple of one production facility, there would be time to also make links. But most of the time, if your Terran opponent is going to play standard, you would see a third CC by now because most Terrans, especially Hellion-based Terrans, go one 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 into a third base. It's just the most... It's like 90% of the time that's what you're going to see. Yeah, that's like super, super, super. So if you see a third command center, you are more than welcome to go back to droning until 66 drones. Like 66, 67, 68, somewhere in that realm. But 66 plus up to, upwards to 70. Uh, which that represents a fully saturated three base plus a couple drones if you go above 66. Uh, which is totally fine because as you saw last game, I hit... 60 like i was at like 68 drones by like five minutes and 19 seconds so it's very doable very fast and uh and then once you're there if the terran is gonna go for a type a weird type of harass that's when your queens because you're still making seven queens your seven queens could easily handle a little bit of a harass from a little bit of hellion pressure or like a banshee uh this is still before a battle cruiser could hit you things like that um so, and also, let's say your overlord scouted into the base and you're like, oh, fuck. My four-minute overlord scout is scouting the initial starting of a fusion core in his base. Well, that would mean that you could still drone all the way up to 66. And as soon as you get there, then you make one spore per base. Because if you're hitting, if you're seeing a fusion core Terran and you're hitting uh, 66 drones by like 520, a battle cruiser can physically not get in your base till about six minutes. So you still have plenty of time to make spores. Uh, so 
uh, again, that's just ideally you could you could get away with the drones and then if you can get to three base saturation really quickly and then make lings, you're good to go. So four minute scout is huge at telling you this for a lot of different reasons about what could the Terran be doing here. Because if it's just standard th third base with a little bit of pressure, those initial lings that you make where you make four for the Reaper and then you make like 12 more once you have speed, that's totally fine. Like you with Queens and those lings, like those 14, 15, 16 lings you have, whatever around there, you would easily handle all types of pressure as long as you use the queens first and don't use the links first. So have I, have we talked about that before? Or do you want me to explain what that means? Yes, yes. I think, yes, we've talked about um, like defending Hellions with queens. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, overlord placement to get queens yeah. in position. So Hellions always have to fight queens before links because the biggest mistake Zergs make is they try to defend Hellions with links first. And it's like, oh, I just lost seven and he ran away. I just lost five and he ran yeah. away. Don't ever do that. So Full disclosure, that still happens sometimes. Yeah, no, I, they have the little voice, the little voice that says "vibe wouldn't like this." Yeah, it, it, it happens all the time. I totally get it. If like you're, if you're not on point and you're not paying attention, it can definitely happen to you. But uh, ideally, what you want to do is you definitely want to uh, you want to always make sure the uh, the the queens are definitely in the front, so they're like you know every time the hellions try to engage, you just popped in like forty damage with your five queens or four queens or whatever, smacked him a couple times, he runs away. Or if he just goes, fuck it, I'm committing, then you bottle him up. Like, you just block him on the other side of the queens when he tries to go towards your drones, and your queens are hitting the whole time, so they definitely help. Uh, so yeah, I'm glad you understand that. But Queen Ling can defend almost everything up until just after five minutes. Easy peasy if it's not multi-racks or multi-factory. So that's why you, this scout, the four-minute scout, is fucking huge at telling you what it is. And you can use it even if you don't see anything and you're like, well, he just killed me with way too much Marines. You already know it's multi racks because there's no fucking way he could have like nine Marines and your overlord dies before it really sees anything. If he was on one racks at that point it means multi racks. So that's time to make a few links. And if it's time to make links, all that means is you your next full inject round, you make links and then go back to making drones and you make maybe some Banes with it too. So instead of having like 12 links, or 15 lings or whatever, and that's it. Now, suddenly, you just made another, like, 20 lings. You made, or, like, 24 lings, because you just made a full inject round and maybe, like, an additional, like, three automated larvae or so. Because that's three larvae per hatchery, which is nine larvae in total. You can multiply that by two for the fact that you're making lings, which is 18 lings just off the inject. And let's say your next inject is 10 seconds away. You're going to make one larva per hatchery on top of that, which is going to be six more lings, so that's 24 lings in total. And then as soon as you make that full inject wave, then you can go back to making drones with those lings you just made. And you would, if you're thinking you're going to get pressured, you'd want to add it maybe like six banes or something like that. And that, that you're fine. So a lot of people don't know that that's how that goes, but you just make one full round of like 20 ish lings. And then you go back to droning anyways, and you'd be fine. Cause again, you have time to react with droning once you can defend yourself. And if you can get to that three base saturation quickly, now you can go back to making lings again, and now you can act if he's like two base all in. Now suddenly you're able to overpower him with just uh, superior production, and then you can actually do something like afford a macro hatch. So now you have four hatchery, four queen pumping out hydroling bane, while your opponent's doing a two base all in. And it's just the longer it takes for the fights to continue to happen, the more you outproduce them. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then. The lastly, the last scout that matters a lot is you want to scout a, so that that four minute scout's massive at knowing when you want to drone or when you can drone. And if you uh, let me explain this too, this is something I, I didn't touch on yet, but it's really important. This is talking about when you go back to droning after 66. So we're talking about going from 66 to 80, like 80 to 85. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, t two things are the trigger for this. Number one is a third base. So if you literally go, oh, he's got a third base. You can make a little bit of safety links after three base saturation and then just immediately, even before the, before the fight happens, like I showed you in the last example, which we'll do again this game, you just immediately go into drones all the way to 85. And, you're, and then you go yeah, right yeah. back so into it's again. They have three, I can get four. Exactly. Because if you have the safety units you make after your speed and then after your third base saturation is done, that will be enough to keep you alive if he decides, you know what, even though I have a third base, I'm going to do an attack right now. Uh, and you could easily just start making units as the attack starts to happen, and you would defend it just fine. Uh, then, if it's the other the other trigger that would tell you it's safe to drone a fourth, 
is if your opponent pushes you and you knew like you're in the phase of making lings because you scouted no third command center, you're expecting to be attacked, he then attacks you, you kill said attack, then you can make drones again and you can drone to AD. Yeah. So you, you either kill a timing or you just see a third base. Yeah, yeah. The, the famous B to GM drone window. Yes, exactly. Um, and then, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. There's the six-minute scout as well. And the only reason why you'd ever do a six-minute scout is if your opponent still has not revealed what they're doing yet. If you're like, okay, I'm not sure. Uh, he might be going bio. He might be going mech. I have no fucking clue. Yeah, yeah. If, that, if, you, if you find yourself in that situation, definitely make an overseer at, like, if you're, if you're feeling like you don't know what's happening and you want to start making units, you definitely don't want to be making mass Lingbane Hydra against mech. You want to be going for more, like, no, roaches no, into, like, Swarmost no, Hydra no. against mech. So, uh, the fact that you make a hydrogen is not a big deal, but you definitely don't want to be going mass Ling Bane. So if you're if if you're in that no. moment where you still don't know at like five thirty when you're getting ready to start making units again, definitely make an overseer as well to pair with it like right away. Fly it to his base because you, then you could get a scout into his base by just around six minutes, maybe like six minutes, six ten, six fifteen, something around there. And a guaranteed after six minutes, you will see additional factories or additional barracks. Or additional star ports if he's the oddball Sky Terran player, which is really rare. But uh, you'll at least know what you're up against. And if it's Sky Terran, just fucking go Mass Hydras and you're fine. And Swarm Host. That way you can, like, because Sky Terrans pair with Siege Tanks a lot. So you can just treat it like mech if it's Sky Terran. Uh, and yeah, that's really it. Uh, other than that, you'll know what's going on then. And you can make the choice of going, is it anti mech or is it anti bio tank or is it anti bio mine? Okay. Feel good? Cool. Cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this is going to be the real bio tank example, not the fake one. I'll, I'll say it as well in the start of the game. I'll say the the real bio tank. Uh, <laughs> I know I said the last one was bio tank, but that was actually bio mine. Okay. So now now, now it's going to be Ling Bane, Hydra, and then Ultra. Lurker. Or oh, sorry. Yeah. Ultra. Ultra. Jesus. Yes. I did it yeah. again. Uh, yeah. Ultralisk is going to be the, the this one this game. Buy tank. All right. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> we got our same opener and it's going to be the same opener again until we make the infestation pit so all of it's like identical once again this is why this build flows so well for you it'll be easy to do both styles because the actual whole build is pretty much the same thing it's just your hive tech units different essentially yeah I really try to do like the, the same as much as possible yeah, no, for sure. It makes yeah, it easier. It's hard, hard enough to, to remember the, the essentials. Yep, and the, the the only way this build deviates is you just wait to make an ultra in a hive tech. If once you have a hive, if it's by if you want to make ultras, if it makes sense for tanks, or if you want to deal with uh, mines earlier in the game and you can make a lurker in as you also start a hive. Okay, we got our uh, 20th drone going down to our third base. We have our hatcheries now also rallied it down to the natural. We just started our next overlord, so let's take our second overlord now, go to the back of the main base. Make queens and a couple lings. Take off of our gas with two drones because we're about to get speed. Swarm forces under Overlord, attack. try to go to the cliff before it dies. Okay, now we can take our third base here in just a second. And there we 
go. And now, creep tumor first at natural, inject first in main. So creep tumor first. I'll add the furthest pixel out to go towards the third base. Make dro drone priority first. Like, we're making another overlord right now and drone priority. And then once we have all the larva spent, then we make another queen. Okay, so drone overlord queen. Yeah, so just know larva is always your priority. Never ever go like, well, I have five larva. Yeah. Let's make a queen now. Always spin that larva first. And then you want to keep pumping queens every time you're within like eight supply of your max or ten supply of your max. Just make an overlord. So we just injected. We just made a bunch of drones again. We have an overlord in production already. And we can spend another creep tumor. Send this queen down to my third base. Speed is almost done. So let's go ahead and start making a few more lings. Because this is that moment when we might get attacked by some Newly random fucking hillian attack. Or if we scouted it or whatever, you know, if you're like... this, Because this is just a safety version. So we're making like another like 10 lings or so. And now we're done making lings. And we go right back into making drones and overlords. We can make a queen out of our third base. And now we have a good amount of lings to cover. Keep spreading that creep. So now we already have our third connected to our natural by like four minutes. We just saturate our gas in our main base, re rally our hatcheries to our third base, and keep making queens. And now we can, we can start a layer and go into a bailing nest here in just a second as well. So we'll just make a bane nest like right here in front of the natural. Beans. Oh, yeah, sorry. When did you put two back on gas? I think so uh, I put two back on gas as soon as I'm, I'm I'm still making drones after two fully saturated mineral lines. And as soon as some new drones pop out, oh, okay. I put them back on the yeah, gas. Yeah. So two fully okay. saturated mineral lines is that the trigger sense. for that. And then once yeah. my third base has 12, I take two more gases again. And you can put them on your third base or whatever. And now once you're fully saturated and you're still making drones. So again, this is where that four minute scout would be huge, right? So you, by now you would have wanted to have known at this point. Am I going to get attacked by some crazy shit, or am I going to be able to get by with just more drones? If you saw a third command center at like 422, you'd be like, yeah, we can make drones. Cool beans. So we can go to 66. And we're already at like 66 drones by 5 minutes and 10 seconds. Like, you can get there super fast if you ever see a third base. It's ridiculous how fast you can get there. Okay, and then now we're, we're there, so let's make finally a couple more drones at the end here. Just so we don't fall below 66 as we make our final bits of tech. For like the hydrogen and stuff like that. And the double evos. Okay, and now we're 16 on every base. This is solid. Let's make two more final drones again. For the hatchery at the fourth and the hatchery that is macro hatch. Now we make a bunch of links. So this in, we're still sitting at 66 drones, including everything we just built. Uh, like all the extra buildings we needed to make. And then we're just going to crazy link production right now. And we have upgrades as well started for Hydras, for Melee Carapace, for Bane Speed. We have, we can have make Banes on the way here. Command unacceptable. So again, all this shit is all the same, both builds. And then at this point now, we made a good round of links. We, we killed the timing, right? As well, which is fine. But we made a good round of links. We're safe here. We can go right back into making drones right now. We, and we can go into... Uh, the like So we make round a round of links first. Or sorry, a round of drones first for the fourth. Then we can go back into making hydras. Then we go back into making Lingbane. Because if we do drones first, we'll, our hydras... The perfect time to make hydras is when your first of two upgrades in the hydrogen is done. So we should be making Hydras in about 30 seconds because that's when the upgrade will be finished. And now we're at 84 drones, which is fucking solid. We can start a fifth base because our main base is going to mine out soon. We can uh, take a couple gases at our fourth. We can send one queen back to the main, one queen to the, to the fourth. So now we have five queen ejecting five hatch. And now we start Hydra upgrade number two and we start making Hydras. And you can also pair this, again, with like an Overseer and also a few more Banes. Just so you have more Banes to defend if you get attacked or whatever, because your Bane speed's also done by now. And we're just still spreading creep. Hydra-wise, right now we're probably around like 15 or something in production. Something in, the, in that realm. And uh, yeah, we're just injecting all of our bases. You're going to have so much larva if you do this with the 5 hatch. 
with Vibe Queen. And now I would say we're kind of done making Hydras. We should have around 20. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be in that realm of area, that range. Now look at our upgrades on our, on our melee and our carapace. It's about done. So right now, again, this is ultras, right? So we're not going to make a Lurker Den. We're just going to make the Infestation Pit because we're about to start 2-2. Two, 2-2 two. Two, two starting right now. And we're going right back into Lings and Banes. Because we have, our Hydras are done. Hydra speed is also about done. So if we were to get attacked, that shit should be finishing here pretty soon. And we're just... If you wanted to attack him, I do not recommend sending your whole army out. Instead, just do little counterattacks with, like, Ling Bane. And again, you're, you're just making mass waves of Ling Bane to max out pretty quickly here with Ling Bane. Infest Infestation Pit will finish. As soon as Infestation Pit's done, we want to be going into a Hive tech. So here comes the Hive. Still making Lings like crazy. Still spreading our creep like crazy. That's all we're doing. So every time we spread another creep tumor, makes it easier for us to just kill the Terran if he decides to push. Still making Ling Bane. And now we're basically maxed out. We're waiting on our last Overlord to spawn here because uh, we're not quite at 200 supply. We're four supply off. And when that final Overlord spawns, we can definitely finish off the last of our Zergling production. And again, this is this army right here is fucking huge. It's nice. It, if it's on creep as well, that's super, super effective. We are maxed out. And we, still, we again, look at the Larva Bank as well. I have so many fucking hatcheries. <laughs> like 22 Larva yeah. just... And it's, and it's, max. watch what it is, so watch what it is at 10 minutes. It's gonna go from like 22 to like 45. Like it's gonna be insane how quickly this shit goes up if you have five queens ejecting five hatches. It's going to be nuts. And then the Terran's attacking us, we can definitely push forward and, you know, go kill that. Now if we look at our hive tech, it's basically done. So now we would throw down our Ultra Din, we throw down Adrenal Glands, we throw down 3-3 three, three here in about the next 20 seconds or 30 seconds. And we're going to be going into 3-3 three, three Ultras with Link, with uh, Link Bane Hydra with it. And now, check out my Larva now. I'm probably am sitting around 50 Larva or something like that. Yeah, you just hit 49. Yeah, it's fucking insane how much Larva you have with this kind of a playstyle. It's like you're going to be like, wow, I'm loaded all the time. Uh, and, now, uh, and now, like I said before, the perfect composition. So again, assuming opponent is bio tank ideal comp for zerg is six ultra 20, 18 to 20 hydra Ret, uh, 80 to 85 drones rest ling bane one third bane plus two third ling and that's it yeah. that's, that's so that's Except for the ultras, that's very much the same. As it's exactly, yeah, it's exactly, it's, like, it's basically the difference of, you're going to have... Same number of drones, same, yeah, same Ling Bane. Ev everything is the same. same. Ratio. The, the, everything's the same. Ratio, Ling Bane, hy drone count, Hydra count. The only thing that's different is six ultras is a little bit more supply demanding than ten lurkers is. Just uh, by a little bit. Actually, hold on. Ten lurkers is 30 supply. Uh, and six ultras is, six, it's 36 supply. So it's about the fucking same thing. It's almost oh, okay, it's almost yeah, exactly yeah. the same. So yeah, like six, uh, six you could even, honestly, you could even go five ultra. Like five ultra would still work. You don't want to go too many ultras though. You want to have around five or six. That'd be great. Because if you have some ultra, the reason why it's so good is because not only do they add in good damage to army because of the fact that they can cleave, but they tank like crazy so that your Ling Bane can really collapse on everything and kill everything too. Um... So majority Link Bane with like a few, like six ultras is fine. Uh, so your composition is mostly going to be the same thing. It's just instead of having lurkers, you have ultras. Uh, and then, yeah, you're... Uh, from there, it's just you, you repeatedly keep injecting your hatcheries. You keep fixing your economies whenever you see oversaturated uh, situations going on. You can take another base. Keep spreading your creep. And you just keep collapsing on your opponent with Hydra, Link Bane, Hydra, Ultra. If they're going tank focus. And the best way you can do it, too, is at this point as well, like we said before, once you have that kind of excess money going on, when you're at the going into, like, hive tech situation and you, you see your bank's kind of rising, definitely get burrow. Definitely get overlord speed. Maybe make, like, two or three more, more ultras, and that way you can use changelings, and you can kind of spot where the Terran is. So you can kind of, you don't even have to always have your army in one control group. and Or, like, you can still have it in one control group, but you don't have to have it all in one area. You can just green box chunk of it and go, hey, 
Let's go some of my army to the top of the map, some of my army to the bottom of the map. Let's let's do a strategy like this, where let's just say I, I poke the bottom middle base that's in, near his main base, like right here. I poke it, I walk in, I get his attention, his units come down to this area to defend. And let's just say let's say we assumed that one of our scouts in top right scouted another base and we're like, hey Terran, come here, chase me. And then this army top right just smashes the base up here. And he, you pull him out of position to now kill an economy. And you just keep remaxing on the ideal composition we gave you. And you keep just doing this to Terran until you break his economy overall until he dies. How's that feel? Yeah, I mean... <coughs> that makes a lot of sense, right? And I, I think there's something... When it works, there's something very satisfying with, like, you know, picking off the outer base, you know, expanding the creep, yeah. and sort of, sort of slowly kind of eating up the map. That's like, that's very cool. I yeah. like that. The, like cre that. the creep is super important too. Not only because it makes your reinforcements come out faster, and because it gives you vision of everything, so you can see if he ever t decides to counterattack you, but it's even more important because if you can actually consume expansions of his with creep. It makes it ten times harder for him to ever come back in the game if you have control. Because now he has to have detection. He needs to like scan the creep out, kill the creep. He needs to wait for the creep to recede. It just buys you so much time where he's just, again, not mining any resources. And that could be time where you are, and you are collapsing on him with another maxed out army, and he just dies. So it basically puts Terran in a situation where they're, they're stuck in whatever economy they have. And if they get to the point to where the game's like 15 minutes in, and they're still on, let's say, three bases... They just run out of money and then they die because they can't keep up with you anymore. So yeah, fuck yeah. Um, cool. How are you feeling about bio right now with those examples we just did? Yeah, that's. that's I mean, I think that's that's quite fun because, as I said, I don't really. I. Freedom. I mean, I. I guess I do build ultras sometimes. Because yeah. They're at, at high tech, but I usually. I mean, I, I never build lurkers against Terran, and I don't really do much. So it's, it's kind of nice to have sort of a, a high-tech end goal for the build. Yeah, and just keep in mind, too, that's, that's, that's cool. the way you want to engage the Terran, if, they, if you're going for your ultra style versus Terran, the perfect way to engage Terran is to spread out your army, like pre-concave it or pre-set up a flank. Then you can do this correctly by having changelings walk around and figuring out where he is. So you don't have to just, like, randomly guess in Fog of War where you're going. Ideally, changelings tell you he's right there. So if I want to take the fight, I come from multiple angles if possible. So I'm not coming from one direction only. Um, or if I want to avoid him and kill more exposed bases elsewhere, I go kill exposed bases. That's also fine. Uh, but you want to if you're going to take a fight with the army, always try to come in from multiple angles because almost your entire army is melee. So you want to have a wide surface area yeah, spread. Yeah. Uh, that's how you want to ideally do ultra style. But if you're going for the lurker style. The correct way to do that would be you like you can multi prong if you want to a little bit with like or not multi prong sorry you can set up like larger concaves and flanks but it's not as much about that because your army is it's more invested into range siege instead what you want to do is you want to just like what I showed you with the overseer following the lurker you just kind of slow crawl with lurker focus and you shove him back and you shove him back and you shove him back and then once you kind of break him while shoving him back like you've killed all the widow mines or the majority of them, then you kind of just swarm his ass right away. So, defensively, a flank and a concave would be great with Lurker, and Lurker could just kind of hold the area until you eventually want to take the fight. But it's really more about just, like, shoving with Lurker, with an, with your army behind your Lurker, and then once you break, then you shove in deeply. And, you, you know, once you break the Widow Mines, then you just, like, take your army, just run over your Lurkers, and just surround them and kill them. Uh, so that's kind of, just make sure that's how it goes. Yeah. Ultras need to be spread super wide, no matter what. Lurkers can... You can support your lurkers by following them in. And then once you break the opponent, then you just go crazy. So it's less about... It basically... That, that, or go ahead, sorry. No, no, I was just saying, that should be fun. Because usually it's the Terran doing that. Right? No, exactly. And tanks, tanks into your face. That's why... They, they still can do that if they're going tanks, which is why you should not go lurkers against tanks. Uh, you Again, you... Just for anyone out there who hears me say that, if you're like an advanced Zerg or you're someone who is in Masters League, I would say, you 100% can go Lurkers against tanks if you also add in Viper. But that's a whole other level of difficulty and uh, understanding of what you're supposed to be doing to do it properly. So I don't recommend that for anyone in Diamond League. 
But if you're if he doesn't have tanks and he has widow mines, you 100% are the one who has the ability to siege him because widow mines have half the range of a lurker, and you can just you can get into like you can get into the dead zone of where uh, the widow mine can't shoot you, but you can shoot a widow mine. So like any between anything between six and ten is the 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 zone where you hit them, but they can't hit you. And then if you you know do this over and over and over, and you just keep like up burrow move forward. Uh, up burrow, move forward, burrow. Up burrow, move forward, burrow. You just keep shoving Widow Mines back, and Widow Mines die so damn fast that you're going to be doing this every, like, two-second cycles. Like, burrow, two seconds goes by, pff, things are dead. Up burrow, move forward, burrow, two seconds goes by, everything's dead. Up burrow, it'll be fast. Like, Widow Mines don't last very long, if, especially if, it, if you have, like, ten lurkers. Uh, one or two auto attacks, and all the Widow Mines are gone. Uh, especially if they're clumped. So... And then a lot of times too, Terran will only have about like oh, ten widow mines. Yeah. They're going to have about the same amount of widow mine investment that you have in terms of number as you have in lurker. So anywhere between like seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve widow mines. That's very standard for Terrans who are go widow mine bio. And if you have ten lurkers shoving up, shoving back ten widow mines, you're going to be killing all the widow mines within about six seconds if he spreads them out a little bit. Uh, if you have to burrow an upper row a couple times, and once you don't see anymore, and you're like, I think we're good, even if there's like one or two still left over. If you're engaging now with Ling Bane and uh, Hydra, you're probably going to not take as much losses as if you were going to engage into like 12 little mines, and you're only going to lose maybe a couple of chunks of Lings if you'd micro nothing and you just aim of it, and you'll still overwhelm them and kill them at that point, because then you can also still, as you're taking the fight, you can up burrow the lurkers, walk forward, and burrow into his face again. You still can't do that, because all you have to do is go like this. If you have two lurker, one Ling Bane Hydra, two burrow, up burrow, move, up burrow, up burrow, move, burrow, up burrow, move. Okay, they're all all the widow mines are kind of gone. One a move, two burrow up burrow move. Go back to the lurker usage again while your one is on a move. That's a great way to micro it. For super basic terms. Um, but yeah, ultra ling uh, ling banal hydra ultra. That's literally just a move. That is a hundred percent a move against tanks. It's all it's all pre micro pre fight micro where it's just where is he? I scouted with changelings. I'm microing my changelings to figure out where it is. There he is. 30% of my army go there. 30% of my army go here. 30% of my army go there. A move in the center of where they all are. It does like a triangle fucking pincer flank concave thing. And now suddenly you're getting a full surround on Terran from all directions because you pre-spread the fight. You pre-microed the fight. And once the fight started, there's nothing you got to do. It's just literally watching the, the cinematic of Zerg running Terran over if you spread properly. Feel good? Cool, cool. Yes, yes. Uh, and then, okay, so sick. That's kind of overall a good uh, explanation of bio. I'll just give you a quick explanation of Lurker um, before we wrap up here. Lurker hmm? would be... Or sorry, not Lurker. I just said, if I said Lurker, I feel like uh, I said, Not Lurker. Mech, Sorbos, yes, that uh, shit. Me oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so... What you'd want to do with Swarm Host against Mech is the build, ideally, you're going to discover at 4 minutes, or if you don't know by then, at 6 minutes, that it's Mech, based off the scout things we talked about earlier. Yeah. As soon as you realize it's Mech. Basically, as, as, as soon as I see the second factory, right? That's yeah, exactly. Kind of yep. As soon as you kind of discover, oh, okay, it's a Mech build, uh, what you want to do as a response to that is stop making Banes. If you have Bane Link Speed in production, I would say also probably cancel it. You don't really want it anymore. Uh, go into a Roach Warren as soon as possible, as soon as you confirm it's mech, and then get Roach Speed right away. You want to make an army as well, based off of how aggressive the Terran's being. Make like 20 Roaches when the Roach Warren's done, of just like safety Roaches. And then if you feel like you're getting pressured really hard, you can make more Roaches, maybe even Ravagers if you need to. Otherwise, if you feel like the Terran's being kind of defensive mech and he's kind of just sitting back, mackering like crazy, you still go into your hydrogen. Or like, even if you already started your hydrogen by then, you'll have a hydrogen still either way. And you, uh, uh, what's it called? You, so you, the hydrogen's going to be still there with either build. You still get hydro upgrades uh, for the range and speed. And then you, instead of going into, uh, a delayed infestation pit to go into a hive when your 1-1 upgrades are about done. You just immediately make a infestation pit 
as soon as you're done making 20 roaches. So it's going to be much faster than your upgrades. So roaches priority first, yeah. then you make infestation pit. And if you haven't yet made a hydrogen, you also make the hydrogen. But you probably are going to have one. Uh, but if you again, if you scout it really early at like four minutes, you wouldn't have one. So if you don't have one, you like basically, or good scout means you scout early, so you make infestation pit and hydrogen at the same time. Bad scout means the Terran was good about denying your scout, which means you scout late, like at six minutes. That means that you probably already would have a hydrogen because you don't know it's mech yet, uh, and you're still confused. So your hydrogen would already be done, and if that happens to be the case, that's still fine. It's okay. It means you just don't need to make another one or anything like that. You already have one. Does that make, does that make sense with the hydrogen and the infestation pit? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So, and then, you, like I said before, you want to make about 20 roaches no matter what. If he's really, really aggressive, you can make more with, with Ravagers if need be. If he's not super aggressive, 20 roaches is good. Then you go into 16 swarm hosts. This is very specific, okay? 16 swarm hosts. Do not go way above that. Do not go way below that. Try to get 16. It represents two full rows in the bottom command card because each row represents eight. So two rows of swarm hosts. So you have 16. Stop there and then make the rest of your army into hydras. One, and then stop making, like, once you have the Swarmhost, never make Roaches again. Because Roaches get replaced by Swarmhost. And then all you do is, every time you take a fight, off of the, ar your army should, in total, your whole supply count should be 80 to 85 drones, 16 Swarmhost, the rest Hydra, and then you just go, Swarmhost, go send your Locust at him. Okay, Hydras, follow the Locust in, kill stuff. Okay, Locusts are about to all expire, or they're all about to die. Hydras back up, and let's do it again in a second here. Meanwhile, yeah, you're, you're yeah. still spreading your creep, and you just keep repeating the process. And in Diamond League, if you do that, if you're good about doing all of that, like not wasting the cooldown of the Swarmhost, so that thing has a 43-second cooldown, and if you're doing it every 43 seconds, Terran is going to feel overwhelmed like crazy because a, a lot of the time what happens is is if you launch a wave of Locust at the Terran, by the time that they're done defending it, you're already down halfway through the cooldown. So you're already at like 21 seconds left or like 22 seconds left out of your Locust cooldown to be... That's all that's left. So it's not that much time that Terran has to then go, oh fuck, another wave is coming. Um, and you can break them down if you do it correctly. But if you're doing a wave like once every two minutes, then it's not going to be that intimidating for Terran. They're going to have a lot of time to keep recovering and surpass the damage that you should be doing to them. So that's really what Swarmos are all about. It's about maintaining the yeah, pressure. Yeah. And then yeah, we, we, we had a lesson about that, and I I mean, I certainly get flattened by Terrans. Yeah. Still, right. But but after that, things seemed a lot more doable. That's I, good. I, I think. Awesome. Yeah. And is, just um, keep in mind, too. It is for us are quite fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? It's just nice watching shit die, and you're like, I didn't spend any money on that, and you did. Yeah, you say, like, free damage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the big things, too, is the bio builds, Evo Chamber wise. You, you're always going to get the same upgrades, so you're like, you're always getting the Hydra upgrades, you're always going to get Adrenal Glands for the Zerglings, all these things are the same, based on what the units you're going to be making, and you're always going to go Melee and Carapace against a Bio, but if you realize it's Mech, if you have already started Carapace, unless it's like literally about 10 seconds from finishing, cancel that shit and go into Missile Weapons. So if you know it's Mech, Missile Weapons and Melee Weapons are the upgrades you should be going for, and if you know it's Bio, Melee and Carapace is what you should be going for. All the way to 3-3 three, three on both of those as examples. And then if you, it, no matter what it is, if it's Mech or if it's Bio, you are more than welcome to get the final upgrade of what you didn't get yet once the other upgrades are done. So once you're 3-3 three, three, Melee Carapace, if it's Bio, you can slowly get ranged weapons so you slowly can make your Lurkers or your Hydras better. Yeah. And if you're up against Mech, you go 3-3 three, three, Missile and Melee weapons. And then you can slowly get your Carapace last. Um... At towards the end of all of it, like throughout the game, which will be like probably more like 20 minutes plus. And yeah, that's kind of it, honestly. That's uh, yeah, I would say save those replays for yourself, uh, just so you don't lose yeah. them. Yeah, and then uh, I would make sure you, you can title it too. Uh, the first one, you can title it Bio Mine Example with Lurkers, and then the second one, you can, you can title it Bio Tank Example with Ultras. So you know which one you're looking you're looking at as well without having to open it up. Uh, and then yeah, just do those builds, man. And I guarantee if you, if you can just get down like the biggest thing is the creep spread and the larva. Like if you can maintain the larva as effectively as we did, not only spinning it properly, 
but generating it like we did once we were at that point where we're about to max out and you're like, okay, you have 50 fucking larva in the bank and you're making, and here's the crazy thing. We have five hatcheries on five queens and just that alone, if we can maintain larva, you're generating six larva per hatchery every 30 seconds because you're, you're generating three and you're also uh, from the, the automated generation and you're getting three more from the inject every 30 seconds. So that's six larva every 30 seconds, which if we want to make it super easy with an example of like one minute, because we we can do it by like minutes, you just double it. Now that's 12 larva a minute per hatchery. That's five hatcheries you're doing this with. That's 60 fucking larva a minute that you can be generating right there just with five hatcheries with five queens. That doesn't even include... That's a lot. That's a lot of lingo. No, I know, right? That's a... That's remax, 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 remax. And all you're doing... You're not even making extra queens for this. You're just ripping off creep spreading queens because by now by that point around like seven minutes or so when you have bases five or like oh sorry you have your fourth base going up you have your fifth macro hatch uh your fifth hatchery in for the form of a macro hatch going up once you're at that point your your amount of creep tumors you're gonna have is gonna be you're gonna have like 20 active tumors already so you're gonna have like a big spread across the map already and you could easily take your creep spread group down from like four queens down to like two and all those two queens yeah, really yeah. do now is they just replace creep that gets scanned. So if the Terran kills a wave of creep and you go then push the Terran away from that creep with your army, you go replace it with those two creep shredding queens. And you're fine. It's just all about replacing instead of generating more. And because you already have a lot of active tumors as it is, which are going to generate more for you. Yeah, man, and that's, that's pretty much it uh for today i would say for something that's going to help you really just smash through diamond honestly in a really smooth way um any final questions about anything no no i don't think so i'm just um gonna review those replays sure no definitely get, definitely get should cracking uh yeah definitely <laughs> should and i will like i said before like i've told you you know, you know how it works i'll send this vod to you by probably like tomorrow and then uh yeah you'll be able to watch it as well as many times as you want and, dude, thank you very much again for doing another month of coaching. Oh, thank you very much. All right, good luck, dude. Uh, have, have a good stream. Thank yeah. you. Uh, have a good rest of your night, man. Bye-bye. All right, see you. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you guys liked it as well. This has been another ZVT diamond level lesson. So those zergs out there who wanted some more easy to do, easy to, easy to maneuver styles against Terran, if you're struggling with Terran, there you go. Hopefully this can help you too. And uh, good luck. Thanks for hanging out, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, peace. Stay happy. Stay healthy. And I'll see you guys probably tomorrow. <laughs> Do videos every day. All right, see you guys later. Peace.